This is section 4.2, the mean value theorem, and our first content objective is to understand and use Rolle's theorem. When we're done, I'd like you to be able to explain why equal y-coordinates at the endpoints are not enough to guarantee a horizontal tangent line at an interior point. To connect this to old knowledge, we're going to remember that there will be five theorems that you will be expected to know inside and out, and that will show up in both multiple choice and free response questions on the AP exam. The first two, which we've already done, are the Intermediate Value Theorem, or the IVT, and the Extreme Value Theorem, or the EVT and both of these require a function to be continuous on a closed interval. With this condition met, both the IVT and the EVT guarantee particular characteristics involving the function's outputs, or the y-coordinates. With the IVT, we'll get y-coordinates between any other two y-coordinates, and with the extreme value theorem, we will be guaranteed a max or a min. The two theorems we're going to learn in this section require more than just continuity, continuity, and they guarantee particular characteristics involving the function slope. So our first theorem is Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem says if we let y equal f of x be a function that satisfies the, these three conditions, then I'm going to have at least one point where the slope equals zero. So if we look at the conditions, we have to have f continuous on the closed interval. So a closed interval for the domain, and we cannot pick up our pencil in between. The second condition is that f has to be differentiable at every point of its interior. That means on the open interval from a to b, we cannot have any corners, cusps, or vertical tangents. And then the final point, final condition, is that the endpoints or rather any two points in that interval, have to have the same y output, the same y coordinate. As long as these three occur, then there is at least one point in that open interval from a to b such that the tangent slope at that point will be zero. So it's important to remember that the hypothesis of this theorem requires that f be continuous on the closed differentiable on the open, and the two y-coordinates have to be the same. As long as we satisfy these three, then the conclusion is going to deal with the function slope. We're going to get a y-coordinate, or excuse me, a well, I guess we could say a y-coordinate on the derivative curve that is 0, or we're going to get a slope that is 0 on the original. If we look at these three examples, we can see here that we are drawing without picking up our pencil, so we satisfy the first condition, which is f must be continuous on the closed interval. Then in between a and b, we see that there are no corners, cusps, or vertical tangents, and we can see that the y-coordinates, or the outputs, at both a and b are the same. Because of this, by Rolle's theorem, we have to have at least one value of c where that tangent slope is zero. We can see here that we have an infinite number of tangent slopes that are zero, and it occurs everywhere in between a and b. So here's another version. Here I've got two y-coordinates that are the same, and I get from this y-coordinate to the other without picking up my pencil, and I have no corners, cusps, or vertical tangents on the way. So this Rolle's theorem guarantees that I will have at least one horizontal tangent for some value of c in between a and b. Another example, here I've got a y-coordinate at a that is the same as the y-coordinate at b, and I'm getting from a to b without picking up my pencil and without any corners, cusps, or vertical tangents. Because of this, I'm guaranteed at least one c, and in this scenario I actually get two. We now want to do example one, which is to verify that the functions satisfy the three hypotheses, and then find all the numbers c that satisfy the conclusion. So the hypotheses, remember, the first condition is that f is continuous 
on the closed interval. Well, if I look at f, I see that it is a polynomial. So no division by 0, no roots, and no logs. So no problems with continuity. And if I look at step 2, if I actually take the derivative, I get yet another polynomial that has no problems. So this one's going to be differentiable on the open interval because there are no problems with this one, no corners, cusps, or vertical tangents. The third criteria is that when I plug in a, I should get the same thing as when I plug in 2. Well, if I plug in 0, I see that I get 5. And if I plug in 2, I'll get an 8 minus a 12, which is a negative 4, plus a 4 is 0, plus 5 gives me 5. So I do indeed match all the three hypotheses. So the conclusion is I now need to find the values of c that satisfy. So the values of c will be when f prime of c, which is that derivative with a c plugged in, has to equal 0. I've got to have a horizontal tangent. This doesn't factor, so I'm going to use my quadratic formula to find that c will be the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. If I simplify this, I get 6 plus or minus a 36 minus a 24, which is a 12 or a 2 root 3 over a 6, and then I can reduce that. Looks like 2 goes into everything. So 3 plus or minus root 3 over 3. Now remember that c are the values that are just in the open interval. So if I look at 3 plus root 3, that's going to be about 4, a little less than 5, divided by 3. So that's 1 and a third-ish, or 1 and 2 thirds, which is definitely in between. And I can take 3 minus a 1 point something, which will be probably a little bit bigger than a third, but smaller than 2 thirds. So that is also in between. So these are both values of c that fit in the interval. If I look at part b, I need to first verify that this satisfies the conditions of roles. So first, sine functions have no division by 0, no even roots, and no logs. So we know that we'll be continuous on that closed interval. We also know that if I take the derivative of this, I'm going to get a 2 pi times a cosine of that inside unchanged. Notice I did the chain rule with that. This again has no division by 0, no even roots or nor logs. So this is going to be differentiable on the open interval. And criteria 3 is if I plug negative 1 into the function, I should get the same thing as if I plug positive 1. So if I plug in negative 1, I'll get the sine of 2 pi negative which is 0, and if I plug in positive 1, I'll get the sine of 2 pi, which is also 0. Therefore, I satisfy all the criteria, and I'm looking for the c's that are now guaranteed by Rolle's theorem. I need that f prime of c, which will be 2 pi times the cosine of 2 pi c to equal 0. So I'm looking at when cosine of 2 pi c equals 0. Remember, cosines equal 0 when the inside equals an odd multiple of pi over 2. So I could have it equal pi over 2, or 3 pi over 2, or 4, 5 pi over 2, etc., etc. So we need to pick which ones are actually in the interval. So if I isolate my c, I will have a pi over a 4 pi, which is a 1 fourth. I'll have a 3 pi over a 4 pi, which is a 3 fourths. I'll have a 5 pi over a 4 pi, which is a 5 fourths. And then I can also go in the negative route. So I could have a negative pi over 2, a negative 3 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, etc., etc. And if I put all of those over 2 pi, then I'm going to get a negative 1 fourth, a negative 3 fourths, negative 5 fourths, on and on and on. Now remember that the mean value theorem guarantees values of c that are in between this negative 1 and 1. So we're only going to use the ones that are in between. So I'm not going to use the 5 fourths or 7 fourths or 9 fourths. I'm just going to get these four values.
With Part C now, we're going to again look to see that we verify or validate all three conditions of Rolle's theorems. So the first one is that this will be continuous on the closed interval. Well, looking here, we see that we have a square root, and we don't encounter any problems until x is smaller than negative 6. Notice that negative 6 will work. So because we have no problems with this root on this closed interval, we can say that f is continuous on the closed interval. And if we take the derivative, we'll get the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second one times the derivative of the first. And if we simplify that, I'll give ourselves a little more space, we'll get an x over a 2 root x plus 6 plus a root x plus 6. Notice that this will have problems if x is equal to negative 6 or if x is smaller than negative 6. We'll divide by 0 if we put in a negative 6, and we'll have roots of negative numbers if we try to put in something smaller than negative 6. So that means we have no problems as long as we're larger than negative 6. And notice that we want this to be differentiable on the open interval. The open intervals including values that are only larger than negative 6. So we have no problems on that open interval and we satisfy the condition 2. Our third condition is that if we plug in one endpoint, we should get the same output as if we plug in the second endpoint. If I plug negative 6 in, I'm going to get a 0. And if I plug in 0, I also get a 0. Therefore, I have satisfied all three conditions, and I'm guaranteed that f prime of c, which is this, has to equal 0. Now, before I actually set this up, I'm going to get a common denominator, because it'll be easier to work with it. If I do, I'll have a 2 over a root x plus 6, and this one needs a 2 and a root x plus 6. So if I simplify that and plug in a c, I'm going to have an x plus another 2x's gives me a 3x plus a 12 over a 2 root c plus 6. I need this to equal 0, and fractions equal 0 only if the top equals 0. So if I set that equal to 0, I can see that c will be negative 4. I double check that negative 4 is in the open interval, and it is, so I am done. If we look at example 2 now, it says we want to show that f of negative 1 equals f of 1, but there's no number c in the open interval such that f prime of c equals 0. So what we're doing here is we are looking at Rolle's theorem, and we're seeing that we have only one of the conditions met here. So if we actually look at the three conditions of Rolle's theorem, we know that f of negative 1 is the same as f of 1, because if I plug each of them in, I'm going to square it and then take the cube root and get a 1. So that gives me 0. And I can tell that this has no problems, because taking a cube root doesn't throw anything out. So this is continuous on the closed interval from negative 1 to 1. But if I take the derivative of f, I'm going to get a negative 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third, which is actually a negative 2 over a 3 times the cube root of x. Notice that this is going to have a problem when x is 0, and x is in that open interval. So because of that, f is not differentiable. We have a cusp on that open interval. And because we do not satisfy all three, we don't get the conclusion. So if we tried to set this equal to 0, it wouldn't work, because fractions only equal 0 if the top equals 0, and negative 2 will never equal 0. Example 3 is another variation of this Rolle's theorem, and it's a little tricky, because what it's asking us to do is, show, is to show that an equation has exactly one real root. And how we're going to approach this is we are going to prove by contradiction. We're going to assume that this function has no roots, and then show that that can't happen. And then we're going to assume that this function has more than one real root, 
and show that that can't happen. So by contradiction, we'll be able to show that we have exactly one, because we can't have none, and we can't have more than one. So the first thing we will do to get toward that is we are going to let f of x be this function. And we are going to see that this is continuous for all real numbers. We know this because there's no division by zero, there's no even roots, and there are no logs. So that has to be graphed without ever picking up our pencil. Now because of that, the next thing that we can show is that if I plug in zero, I'm going to get a one. And if I plug in a negative one, I'll get a one minus a two minus a one minus a four. Well that gives me a negative seven plus a one is a negative six. Notice that I now have a continuous function that has an output of one and an output of negative six. So by the intermediate value theorem, there is at least one c for which the output equals zero. So we know we have at least one real root. We can't have zero re real roots. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to assume f of c1 equals zero and f of c2 equals zero. Well, if that happens, then we are now going to satisfy the three conditions of roles because f will be continuous on that open interval, excuse me, the closed interval from C1 to C2. And the derivative of f, which is 2 plus 3x squared plus 20x to the fourth, is never going to have any problems, which means that f is differentiable on the open interval. So we can also test that this is the third criteria. We have two outputs that were the same. So notice that we satisfy all three conditions of roles if we have two real roots. Well, if we have two real roots, then we're guaranteed a time when this f prime evaluated at c has to equal zero. So if we look here, we have something that is squared that is always positive plus something else that is squared and always positive, and we're adding it to another positive thing. So that means this never happens. Because this never happens, that means that we did not meet all three criteria. And the criteria that we have to cancel out is this one, because f is continuous and f is differentiable on any interval we choose. Therefore, f of c sub 1 cannot ever equal f of c sub 2 if both of them are zero. So we can conclude that f of x equals zero at most one time. You can look through your notes web exam problems now and figure out which ones you'll know how to start and which ones you need help with so that we can have a focus for tomorrow's lesson. I'd also like you to be able to explain why equal y coordinates at the endpoints are not enough to guarantee a horizontal tangent line. Why is it necessary that you be continuous and differentiable in order for Rolle's theorem to apply?